Time. According to the basic definition, time is the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, and future regarded as a whole. Time is no more than a measurement created by humans to sequence events. Time itself is not measurable or travelable because it is not an entity that moves or that events move through. Time is merely a part of a theoretical framework within which we compare events. The German philosopher Immanuel Kant held this viewpoint, famously stating, Space and time are the framework within which the mind is constrained to construct its experience of reality. This isn't the only viewpoint, however. It is the view of some philosophers that time is a part of the essential anatomy of existence, an actual dimension which would be distinct of events in which events would occur in sequence. The physicist Isaac Newton held this viewpoint, stating in his book Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy, Absolute, true, and mathematical time of itself and from its own nature flows equably without regard to anything external, and by another name is called duration. Relative, apparent, and common time is some sensible and external, whether accurate or inequable, measure of duration by the means of motion which is commonly used instead of true time. But what does all of this mean? Well, for the purposes of this video, I will clarify that the Immanuel Kant view would suggest that we never leave the present, that only now actually exist. While the Newtonian view indicates that time exists independent of us, like a kind of cosmic backdrop as we move through it. In general, for most of us, time feels like it's moving. It feels as though we are on a continual march towards the future, and that the past exists as some vague place behind us. There is a subjective element to this. Do we experience time as a judgment based on how we've learned to measure it, or do we experience time as a real sensation? It is important to understand this as we get into how this relates to George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series. In A Song of Ice and Fire, there exists a species of tree known as the Werewoods. The Werewoods seem to have a symbiotic relationship with a race of magical humanoid creatures known as the Children of the Forest. Upon their deaths, the Children of the Forest could live eternally inside a kind of collected consciousness. In exchange, the children of the forest protected and revered the werewoods. The book A Dance with Dragons shows us that the werewoods can also act as a looking glass through which those capable could view other points in time. It also seems that men experience time differently from the werewood trees. The character Bloodraven uses an analogy which compares time, or at least the human perception of it, to a flowing river. For men, time is a river. We are trapped in its flow, hurtling from past to present, always in the same direction. The lives of trees are different. They root and grow and die in one place, and that river does not move them. The oak is the acorn, the acorn is the oak, and the werewood. A thousand human years are a moment to a werewood. And through such gates, you and I may gaze into the past. Bloodraven seems to subscribe to the Newtonian view of time, that time is a literal structure in which events move through. But time does not touch the werewoods. They are eternal. While it is clear that the trees can allow one to view other points in time, whether or not other points in time can be affected is unclear. Bloodraven denies that this can happen, telling Bran that through the trees they only see the shadows of the past. However, there is some evidence that Bloodraven may be lying to Bran. Bran closed his eyes and slipped free of his skin, into the roots, he thought, into the weirwood, become the tree. For an instant, he could see the cavern in its black mantle, could hear the river rushing below. Then all at once he was back home again. Lord Eddard Stark sat upon a rock beside the deep black pool in the God's Wood, the pale roots of the heart tree twisting around him like an old man's gnarled arms. The great sword ice lay across Lord Eddard's lap, and he was cleaning the blade with an oilcloth. Winterfell, Bran whispered. His father looked up. 
Who's there? he asked, turning. And Bran, frightened, pulled away. His father and the Black Pool and the Godswood faded and were gone, and he was back in the cavern, the pale thick roots of his werewood throne cradling his limbs as a mother does a child, a torch flared to life before him. After consuming the werewood paste, Bran called out to his father in the past, and Eddard almost certainly reacted. Perhaps Bloodraven sees a danger in tampering with past events and is trying to deter Bran. Or maybe he believes it is impossible because he himself has never been able to do it. There are hints that Bran's powers are far more potent than even Bloodraven's. With all the magic in A Song of Ice and Fire seeming to be growing stronger, it would make sense if Bran was the most powerful Greenseer in thousands of years, or even ever. Also, Bloodraven suggests that the werewoods exist within the River of Time, but are not moved by it. This would have to mean that a werewood tree exists simultaneously at every point in time starting from its existence. If this is true, then it would mean that the things that Bran sees when he gazes through the trees are far more than shadows of the past. He is looking directly at the past as it is occurring. And since the river of time flows forward past the werewood trees, it seems to be suggested that it is possible to glimpse the future as well. Another question which we have to ask ourselves about time in the A Song of Ice and Fire universe is, is it linear or circular? In the real world, the Judeo-Christian and Islamic belief systems present a linear view of time, beginning with God's creation of the universe and moving forward in one direction from that point. Many other ancient cultures, however, believed in cyclical time, a wheel of time containing repeating ages. Fantasy author Robert Jordan borrowed this concept in his extremely popular epic fantasy series, which was also called The Wheel of Time. The ancient Greeks believed this, and so did the Mayans and the Incans. This is also a concept found in Buddhism and even in the oldest religion in the world, Hinduism. The concept of a wheel of time is found in many other real-world belief systems. There is evidence for this in some sense in A Song of Ice and Fire. There are things that are happening in the modern age that seem to have happened before. The rise of the dragons, the rise of the others, the coming of the long night. There are even characters that can be viewed as legendary figures reborn. Tyrion as Lan the Clever, for example. In the fourth book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series, A Feast for Crows, you can also find this passage. Archmaester Rigney once wrote that history is a wheel, for the nature of man is fundamentally unchanging. What has happened before will perforce happen again, he said. Robert Jordan and George R. R. Martin are not the only fantasy authors to include elements of a wheel of time, which in Vajrayana Buddhism is called the Kala Chakra. It is actually very common in the world of epic fantasy books. The thing about George R. R. Martin's books, that is, he keeps things just vague enough to create doubt. With so many threads, it is inevitable that we as the audience would connect some that didn't actually go together. Ultimately, it may be useless to attempt to figure out which of our modern characters align best with legendary figures from a prior age because multiple characters possess traits of the same legendary figures. Time also could just be linear in the A Song of Ice and Fire world, and any similarities could be merely coincidences. But maybe time could be both linear and circular. Why not? The Jewish Kabbalah calls time an illusion, a paradox. In ancient Greece, time was viewed in two distinct ways, kairos, or chronological time, and chronos, divine time. It's curious when discussing time in this series, because we don't actually know how much time has passed. According to the children of the forest, they have lived in Westeros for a million years, but we have no way to check the accuracy of this fact. The maesters of Westeros also have no good way of measuring the age of their world. The lore book, The World of Ice and Fire, states, There are none who can say with certain knowledge when the world began. Yet, this has not stopped many maesters and learned men from seeking the answer. It is 40,000 years old, as some hold, or perhaps a number as large as 500,000, or even more. It is not written in any book that we know. For in the first age of the world, the Dawn Age, men were not lettered. So since we've taken time to consider the past, we should also consider the future. 
We do not yet fully understand the role of prophecy in the A Song of Ice and Fire world. How much of the future is predetermined, if any? How much of prophecy is merely self-fulfilling? Is anyone really destined for anything? Or do they create their own destinies? Only time will tell. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please like and subscribe for more ideas of ice and fire. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you really enjoyed the video and you want to support this channel, consider checking out my Patreon link in the description. Thank you guys so much.